Hi, welcome back. Today we will discuss methane monoxygenase. It is a fascinating enzyme and actually it is a class of enzyme. A series of enzyme are having similar activities and these enzymes are quite fascinating perhaps as fascinating in their activity as we have seen for cytochrome P450. These are non-heme iron enzyme unlike cytochrome P450. We will follow the books of principle bi of bioinorganic chemistry by Lippard and Barth and also class notes and online available materials by Professor Lippard. So, methane monoxygenase has a di iron center. As you can see over here, two iron centers are bridged by two hydroxy moiety. Of course, they are also linked by this carboxylate group. Each of the iron center is having a histidine unit as you see on iron 1 and iron 2. In addition, there is also carboxylate linkages as you see over here. Clearly, these two iron sites are unsymmetrical. We have seen such unsymmetrical iron sites in hemerythrin. So, this is responsible for methane monooxygenase. That means, methane is converted to methanol at this site. As you know, methane to methanol transformation is the most difficult transformation one can perhaps think of and that is precisely due to the fact that methane is having 104 kcal per mole bond dissociation energy. This class of compounds or the class of enzymes are not limited for converting methane to methanol. You can have a series of other reaction, even aromatic hydroxylation reaction. For instance, one can think of taking toluene and convert it at orthotoluene hydroxylate. Okay. So, orthohydroxotoluene can be synthesized, also metahydroxyl toluene can be synthesized, parahydroxotoluene can also be synthesized. So, these uh, sort of toluene or xylene as a substrate, if the monooxygenase of toluene or xylene is thought of, this is the similar active site the wherein the toluene or xylene will be hydroxylated. Okay. Of course, let us say for toluene you can have orthohydroxylation, metahydroxylation or even parahydroxylation. So, this is the enzyme active site for the toluene parahydroxylation or toluene 4 monoxygenase. Essentially, these hydroxylases a group of enzyme which are capable of hydroxylating the organic substrate. It could be aliphatic substrate, it could very well be the aromatic substrate. As you see here, these are the crystal structure of different monooxygenases and very little differences are existing among these different crystal structures. There are also amoalkene monoxygenase which can convert an olefin into epoxide. There are phenol hydroxylase which can convert phenol into catechol. But all of them once again will have a diiron active site and their active sites are quite similar with respect to each other. In all these cases oxygen is activated and they are often involved in this very difficult transformation. 
for the case of methane monoxygenase, this oxygen activation is coupled with the unactivated CH bond activation as well as corresponding hydroxylation chemistry, right. Well, what is the source of this um, diiron center? What is all we have um, soil methanotrophs which is converting methane to biomass and that is that is one of the source for this methane monooxygenase. By utilizing such soil methanotrophs uh, there is a huge amount of methane, there is huge amount of methane uh, that is converted to methanol. This is 5 to 50 TG methane per year which is overall let us say 1 to 10 percent of uh, methane in air is converted to methanol by utilizing this method. There is methane to methanol formation at room temperature under you know under pH 7 let us say or under neutral condition. I think this is got to be one of the best reaction perhaps you can see in biological system or anywhere in synthetic chemistry setup. So, we are going to see how methane is converted into methanol. Methane would require oxygen NADH H plus to form the methanol. This is the reaction over here. This is a multi component enzyme. The components are hydroxylase MMOH, reductase MMOR, regulative protein MMOB. If you see at this protein, this is a gigantic protein. It is having many subunit alpha, beta, gamma subunits. In each of those alpha subunit, there is this diiron center which is responsible for converting the methane into methanol that means the hydroxylation chemistry is happening. Okay. Just to keep it in the perspective, you have seen previously the oxygen transport and oxygen activation for with iron porphyrin we have hemoglobin myoglobin which is responsible for reversible oxygen binding. right? But utilizing the same iron porphyrin unit with cytochrome P450 we have seen the substrate activation as well as oxygenation chemistry. So, seemingly similar or almost similar active site, but doing completely two different jobs. We have seen the dinuclear sites such as dinuclear dicopper center in hemocyanin which can activate oxygen or bind it in a reversible fashion and deliver the oxygen in desirable position. But the same dicopper center is also capable of converting your phenol into catechol or catechol into the quinone. So, those tyrosinase activity by utilizing exactly same species as in hemocyanin we can that dinuclear peroxo side on peroxo species forming in both the cases and in one case it is for used for reversible oxygen binding in another case we have seen oxygen activation as well as substrate hydroxylation chemistry. For the hemerythrin case we have seen that two di two iron centers are involved for oxygen binding and uh, over there in hydroperoxo species is formed. But most interestingly these are non-heme diiron center. Similar non-heme diiron center can be found as you see in case of methane monooxygenases, but uh, st structural similarities are also there. These are all dinuclear or di bis iron containing active site. These are unsymmetrical iron centers, but in one case as you have seen hemerythrin is capable of converting oxygen into your um, oxygen into into uh, into hydroperoxide during the process but of uh, this bindings are reversible in nature but in case of diiron center of methane monooxygenase as we will see it will be able to convert oxygen into uh, into an useful entity by by converting methane to methanol so, this is what I think are the similarities or, or the contrast between the reversible oxygen binding 
as well as oxygen activation. Let us look at the resources or source of methylococcus capsulates which is responsible for these methane to methanol formation. These are these are beautiful location, these are the pictures from internet from England, but these are the places where people can go and take a bath and these waters are really holy and um, can convert uh, and, and can be responsible for curing many skin diseases, right. So, this is one of the one picture. So, bath this is a small city in Somerset, England located um, on a bend of the river um, Avon about 185 kilometer west of London. But most importantly, this is a very nice touristic place. Well, uh, as you can read from the, uh, from the Wikipedia or any other sources, this is a beautiful place where many tourists visit and, uh, and, and spend quality time with with friends and family. The fundamental part of these Roman baths which are existing in, in England bath Somerset uh, are, uh, are the sacred springs, right. Hot water at a temperature of 460 degree C rises here in this sacred spring uh, at the rate of this 24,000 uh, 24, gallons every day and has been doing so for thousands of years, right. To the ancients, this remarkable phenomenon could only be the work of gods. So, if you are believing in holy man or sacred water, this is the sacred water you can think of and there is no wonder that these are the sources for methylococcus capsulates which is responsible for, for the methane to methanol, uh, methanol conversion. This holy water cleanses the body from all botches, scarvical itchings and breaking out. So, any sort of skin disease um, can be recovered or can be can be cured by, by this holy water. So, if, if you see that that ancient time or, or, or even present time the holy water is sprinkled on your on, on someone's body and and then then miraculously um, the patients got cured or the skin disease or other problem got cured and this is due to the great water which can perhaps have this methylococcus capsulates. There is a strong science behind it and you, we are going to see what is these active sites and how active they are and how they are functioning. Okay. Few more pictures from the mineral springs in Bath, England. So, this is as you can see really, really um, you know wonderful atmosphere being created. It is great to take bath in these places and have nice time over there as well as it has extreme benefits of the med and have uh, you know uh, medicinal value. Okay. So, if you are looking for a great time and wants to solve some of your skin diseases, perhaps this is the place to visit um, and do, do enjoy your time. Okay. All right, another uh, quite exciting stuff that is included or that we can discuss about this methanotrops bacteria is their ability for bioremediation. Let us look at this. Um, Wikipedia information on the pre, on Prince William Sound, which is uh, off the Gulf of Gulf of Alaska on the south coast of the U.S. state of Alaska. It is located on the east side of the Kenai Peninsula. It's uh, largest port of Valdez, and you can read more from Wikipedia or from here. In 1989, the oil tanker Exxon Valdez ran aground on. Bly Reef after leaving Valdez, causing a large oil spill in the Prince William Sound area, which resulted in massive damage to the environment, including the killing of around 250,000 seabirds, nearly 3,000 sea otters, 300 sub harbor seals, 250 bald eagles, and up to 22 killer whales, right. That is quite amazing number, I mean quite frustrating, quite devastating number, right. If you, if you are looking at this number, 
the oil spill that has caused or that 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 has happened in 1989 um, by or from from this Exxon Valdez this was quite devastating and um, it has long long reaching impact on environment it has polluted the area quite quite naturally for for long time to come but if you are looking to for bioremediation i think this is when methanotrophs comes into the picture and these bacteria are grown over there and overall it was possible over time to make this place a suitable place as it was before well what was found that in the root zone was a rich reservoir of oil known oil eating microbes one family of which accounted for fully 95 percent recovery of the uh, of this oil spill so therefore uh, natural disaster or unnatural disaster like this one as you have just seen little bit perhaps can be taken care of by these methanotrophs bacteria by converting the alkane or oils into the corresponding let us say alcohol products and setting off further degradation over long term. So, these methanotrophs bacteria as you have seen are, are found in one of the shores could be this uh, you know Bath England, but they, they are having capability of bioremediation which is wonderful right. Now, let us look at the active site of these crystal structure ok. If you are looking at this active site you see that there are two iron center they are bridged by these two dihydroxo unit here is a water molecule as you have seen there is a glutamate unit it is a mono coordinated glutamate along with an histidine along with histidine coordinated with this iron center this iron center is not exactly same, same as this iron center here you see the two terminal glutamate in this case it was just only one uh, glutamate that was present as you see that there is histidine as well and both the iron centers are bridged by this glutamate 144. This is phenomenal and quite quite fantastic crystal structure right. In cases where uh, it is also possible in the reduced form uh, when one of the hydroxo is missing and uh, then this, this glutamate one of this glutamate can have have the bi coordinating nature and also can be relevant in the catalytic cycle these are the resting state of the catalytic cycle. So, as you see over here clearly methane monoxygenase dinuclear active site looking somewhat similar to what you have seen in hem erythrin where these two iron centers were supported by the histidine side 3 on one side 2 on other side, but here you have you do not have all the histidine side, but you have the glutamate replacing some of those histidine side, but um, quite naturally there is similarity between hemerythrin and these methane monoxygenase active side. If you look at the overall activity by this active site you will find that this bridging a diiron center which is abbreviated over here um, in, in this form where this is the reduced form you start with both the iron center in plus 2 oxidation state oxygen molecular oxygen is reacting with this diiron center to give the superoxo species where one electron reduction from one of these iron center is happening giving rise to the iron 3 iron 2 superoxo intermediate this oxygen is singly reduced right now. So, this is MMOH reduced form this is MMOH superoxo form. Now, from there on um, you one can think of transferring another electron to this oxygen moiety which is now superoxo upon, upon getting reduced by one electron from the second iron center you will see that both the iron center are now in plus 3 oxidation state and the oxygen moiety is reduced by 2 electron to peroxo. Not too much characteristics 
you, uh, characteristic spectroscopic character uh, data are available for this intermediate. Nonetheless, this paroxo intermediate is suitably characterized. For example, Mossbauer spectra are uh, Mossbauer data are quite quite uh, definitive of these iron 3 species and UV visible spectra have the characteristic 725 and 410 nanometer once again indicating such a species is existing. Now this is the species one can think of introducing the substrate to and substrate can get hydroxylated by utilizing this paroxo species indeed many studies have been done upon, upon generation of the species and quick study shows that this is capable of converting RH substrate sp3 CH bond can be hydroxylated to corresponding the hydroxylated product right. Well, from this um, side on paroxo intermediate one can think of or one can characterize this bismuoxo species which is a iron 4 iron 4 bismuoxo species. Uh, here Mossbauer spectroscopic data as well as the UV visible and XFS data are consistent with uh, this intermediate which is known as intermediate Q, MMOHQ. So, this intermediate quite interestingly both of the iron are having iron 4 as you have seen in this previous case this was iron 3. This is a mixed balance scenario and have not much proof in terms of the reaction, um, reaction uh, mechanism or reaction intermediate study. Now this intermediate once it is formed can react un undoubtedly with methane to methanol. So this is the process we are interested in following up too much. Of course it has to follow stepwise. This is the real active species which will convert methane to methanol and from there on the dihydroxo intermediate is generated MMOH ox which can then in presence of NADH and reducing equivalent can give, gives rise to the original compound as we have seen over here. So, these dinuclear iron active sites are quite fascinating as you can see and can convert methane to methanol. If we are to follow up this procedure or these steps over here, we will see that this di, di iron 4 plus oxidation state intermediate will be reacting with methane to form methanol, but there will be an intermediate getting generated into the process. Let us look at the modified mechanism which is uh, which has been recently which has been corrected a little bit wherein you see that almost everything remains similar where iron 2, iron 2 reacting with oxygen to give you the iron 3 peroxo intermediate or a or a or a iron 3 iron 2 superoxo intermediate from there on uh, it can undergo further uh, further uh, reaction or electron transfer to give you the iron 3 iron 3 peroxo intermediate what um, so these uh, peroxo intermediate can directly give rise to the uh, substrate reactivity from rh to roh so that could be one of the possibility but but likely another possibility that can be comes in that can be coming into the picture is the oxygen oxygen bond cleavage of the peroxo to give the iron 4 oxo species now this iron 4 oxo species can then react with substrate methane for example to give an intermediate uh, the characteristics of which is not let's say known so far subsequently it can it can go and form the di iron 3 dihydroxo bridge intermediate so th some of these intermediate remain same however these in new intermediate such as q star is important as well as it is important to know that this h peroxo uh, this peroxo intermediate can directly react with rh and to give you roh without perhaps formation of this intermediate okay so, so far we have seen that these methane monoxygenase enzymes are, are having the dinuclear iron center and it is supported by this uh, side chain of, so of glutamate and histidine and the bridging ligand such as dihydroxo. These units are capable of doing or converting methane into methanol with the help of, of the other subunits which are essential part of this catalytic cycle. But most importantly there is this reaction mechanism as you have seen in the previous slide 
wherein the di iron center is reacting with oxygen to give rise to the superoxo, then peroxo. Now, the revised version of this mechanism says that this uh, peroxo can directly be linked with the with the uh, with this MMOH ox intermediate where it is a dihydroxo intermediate from there on the rest of the catalytic cycle can be completed. Alternatively this peroxo intermediate can, can gives rise to an intermediate uh, diiron 4 mu oxo intermediate which we were seeing. This intermediate can further react to, to give a a metastable intermediate which is which is once again a very reactive intermediate which can then go on to form the iron 3 dihydroxo intermediate. So, in the next class we will try to see how these studies are done to better understand these intermediate that is forming over here. This iron 4 di, uh, dioxo intermediate is quite quite uh, uh, quite reactive we will see the similarity of, of the reaction of this diiron for muoxo species with that of the copper 3 bis oxo or muoxo intermediate. Well, keep studying, we will come back soon later on uh, in the next class discussing the mechanism of this reaction and how people have studied this reaction mechanism in greater detail. Thank you very much.